Welcome back to my sewing room. Today, with my Sonet Studio, we are going to be working with the sketch program. So I just want to do a shout out while all of you are coming in. Say hello to Amy and Meredith. They are in the background. So if you have any questions, please do type them in. Um, and then the gals will relay those to me. Um, so yeah, I guess we're ready to get started. So like I said, today we were talking about the sketch program in my Sonet Studio. Uh, this program was introduced back with 6D. Um, that's where I became familiar with it. Um, it is in the premium subscription or it is in the premium box set. And unfortunately, it is not available on the Mac computers. Um, I wish I can answer why. I don't know why. Uh, I, I never asked that question, um, so I never got an answer, if, if that's fair. Um, but the sketch program, I also want to talk to you about it. Um, it is an underutilized um, program. Not many people use it. And what you need to think about sketch is sketch is just that. It's, it's your drawing. It's not a digitizing program per se. This program doesn't have um, all of the editing features that the, the digitizing portion may have. Um, it is more of a free form, free spirit, um, organic kind of program. It will take um, you know whatever you draw, and yes, it does turn it into stitches, but like I said, it doesn't have the same editing capability of it that um, the digitizing has. So I just want you to put digitizing aside and don't think of this program as digitizing. Think of it as thread painting because essentially that's pretty much what this program is. It's more of a thread painting program. And once you see the tools and things like that, and I'm gonna show you some of the tools, um, you'll understand that. Uh, this program does allow you to bring in background pictures, and I'll show you that. So you have all kinds of options. So you can use background pictures for two different purposes. You can use a background picture to just use as a template, or you can bring in a background picture and enhance it with stitches so that you're just adding some, some type of texture um, to, to, your, uh, to your fabric. The most of the stuff that I'm going to be showing you today, um, they are from the sample folder of um, from the My Sonet Studio. So if you did not download those, I highly suggest that you do that. Um, I should have had this page up. Give me one second. I am going to bring that page up really quick. Where you will find that is um, if you go to My Sonet on your computer and did the wrong thing here. I am going to share my computer just for a moment so that you can see where I am going. And I'll make this quick. You would um, sign in and go to my dashboard. And go to my dashboard. It doesn't want to go to my dashboard. Oh, okay. My account. That is not where I wanted to go. Alrighty, so I am having technical difficulties today finding it, but it is a separate download. It's in the same area where you would find, oh, here, here it comes up now. Sorry, there it is. So it's in the same area where you would go to your embroidery software to download, and you have your choices between uh, Mac and uh, your PC. Um, you still want these, these folders because they're not just for sketch program. It's the sample files for all of, all of the programs. So you still want them. And even if you're using a Mac and you're, you don't have the sketch program, you can use those sample files, um, for other things within the software. So it's, it's not a waste of time. So what it is, is download sample files for exercises. And there are some exercises 
in um, the online manual that you can get, you can access through your help. Um, but these files, I will tell you, they are not an instant download. You do need, they will come down as a download, or I should say they're not an instant install. They're downloaded and then you need to place them in your My Documents. If you need assistance with that, you can uh, contact uh, the customer service. Is that right? Customer service um, or the service center. And they can assist you with that because it is something you need to unzip the program and you need to put them where, where they need to go. So I just want you to be aware of those because they can be very helpful. And I'm going to show you how they can be helpful. And let me switch back to me. Uh, they can be very helpful. And again, I'll show you that in a few moments. Uh, but this way, the things that I'm doing for you today, you can actually try them out on your own with files that are accessible. If I showed you everything um, that was my personal stuff, and I do have one that is a personal project that I'm working on, um, you wouldn't be able to just jump in and um, and play with the program because you'll think, oh, I need her design, but you really don't need my, my images, so. Alrighty, this program, like I said, it came out with 6D, and when we first purchased um, 6D, when 6D first came out, this program was a standalone program, and it also came with what's called a Wacom tablet. Some of you may be familiar with that. It is just a, a, a little square, and it came with a nice little pen, and you wrote on, that little tablet and whatever you wrote on that tablet, it magically showed up on the screen. Touch screens were not, were not really a thing back then because this was over 60 was, has been out, you know, was about almost 20 years ago. So touch screens may have been on the market, but they were probably not in a realistic price point as they are now. So my personal computer, uh, turns into a tablet and it went to sleep. Darn it. Um, and let me show you that. So this is my personal computer. I'm not using this today um, to do the whole entire um, program because this is my personal computer and I don't have the necessary equipment set up set up for this. But if you can see here, I am just turning that into a tablet. And I turned it off again. Boy, today is just not my day. There we go. And yes, I want you to tell me. So here's the tablet. And you can see here's my pen. And it is so much easier for me to do um, to do the drawings with a pen and tablet on my screen than it is with a mouse. Um, can it be done with a mouse? Absolutely. It is just something you need to practice a little bit more at. Like today, I will be using my mouse because on my work computer, um, it can't turn into a tablet and I need, need that computer for um, the viewing. So we'll go ahead and do that. But I want you to see that um, it is easier if you have, um, the tablet like that, but do you have to have it? Absolutely not. I am not going to tell you to go out and purchase a new computer so you can have a flip screen. That's not what I'm saying here. I just want to show you that there are options and it is a little bit easier, a little bit more convenient um, to be able to do that. Also, I mentioned that this program is not um, available on the Mac version. However, with your subscription or even with the box version, you do have um, the option to have your software installed on two separate computers. So if you wanted to, you can, um, you know, if you're only a Mac person, if you know someone who has a PC that you can borrow so that you can play with that program, you can do that. Or if you do happen to own a PC and a Mac, you can have it on your Mac and you can have it on your PC and then you have the best of both worlds. Um, so, all right. Let's go ahead and let's get started. Let me open up the program. So I need to, I need to share my screen with you. 
and there's the screen. So I'm still in um still in my stonet. So there it is. Uh, oh, and hey, by the way, those of you who have a subscription, don't forget that every single Friday they offer up new embroidery designs on in the my stonet library. If you don't have the subscription, that's okay. You can go ahead and purchase any design that your little heart desires. Um, but having the subscription just allows you to have them at, at your fingertips, which is really cool. And um, and there's a categories area that's new. So check that out. Oh, and also they also have collections available now as well, which is super cool. So when you need to, to buy something, you have that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Right now, I have the main program open. So there's two different ways that you can access um, the sketch program. You can do it from the main menu where instead of going to blank screen, you can choose sketch and go straight to sketch. Since I already have my software open, I'm going to go to the create tab and there is sketch on the end. And I think it's running a little bit slow because of all the um, stuff that I have to have operating on my computer right now. So what comes up is there's going to be another window right now. That other window is sitting on my other screen and you can't see it. But this window here is also going to come up. So you can load a picture for a new embroidery design, load a sketch embroidery, or start a new embroidery with no picture. So very briefly, I'll tell you about start embroidery with no picture. That one is for, um, you know what, I'm going to stop sharing for one moment so I can look at you. And I also want to get this. Okay, so what Start New Picture is if you wanted to draw something um, very organically. You don't want to have a picture if you are, are someone who, who has this artistic talent like my daughter she's amazing i handed her my tablet and i said draw something with this i briefly showed her what the tools were and she drew something really quick and i'll, I'll bring that up i saved it so that you can take a peek at um what she did in like two minutes that is um starting with no picture starting with with just a blank slate is also a great place to go if you wanted to do a signature so if you wanted a true signature of your name, it will work best with a um, the tablet type and the pen so that you can get a true signature. If you have mastered um, getting a signature with the mouse, you know, more power to you. That's not something I have done, nor have I really tried. But I know a lot of people are interested in, in signatures to maybe put it on a quilt or something like that because it, it, is, it is something personal. So that is a great way to um, try and capture um, a signature. Okay, I'm gonna reshare my screen again. And it's this one. And because I did some jumping around, things moved. And now I have to wait for things to reopen. So again, this is the other way that you can get to it. And we'll just go ahead and we'll get to it that way. And I am working on uh, dual monitors right now. So I have an additional monitor um, connected to my computer. So sometimes uh, things might not necessarily go to that monitor. So you'll, you know, you'll see me pulling that over. But that's starting with the... Um, with no picture. There's also load um, sketch embroidery. So you can bring in existing embroidery designs into the sketch program and you can add to them. So you can, again, don't think of it like digitizing. We're not editing nodes and things to those existing embroideries. We are just adding maybe some motifs to it or, you know, adding some lines to it and things like that. Um, and I can show you that in a little bit. But what I use the program mostly for is I will load a picture for a new embroidery and I'm going to go next. Here you have the option that you can change your hoop or you don't have to make the decision right now. You can always change it later. I am just going to leave it at um, 150 by 150 for now. And if you had, um, you could get it from, you could paste a picture. So let's say 
just somewhere within your computer, you copied a picture and it's sitting in your imaginary clipboard of your computer, this will come alive so you can paste directly from there. You can load a picture, create a new picture, um, kind of like the same choices that you have when you go into Photo Stitch. I am going to load a picture. And again, I am going to go to, and that menu is over here. These are some things that I have on my computer, but where I really want to go to is it's in my documents and then my Sonet and I have the samples here and there is a folder called Sketch. So these are the sample files I was talking about um, that you really should go and download. And in here you have pics. I also have a stitch folder. Right now we are in the wizard and we're telling it to load a picture. So if I were to click on stitch and open that, you'll see that that blank is paid, is, is that page is blank because they're, um, it, it wants, to, it's in the mode of looking for images. So I will go back to pics and we will start with, well, let's do the cat because, you know, those of you who know me know I love cats. So we will do cats. So this is actually a sketch of a cat. And these work out really great for when you're um, just beginning to learn how to do this program because it has definite lines to it that you can see and they can be a huge help to you. Um, paintings are another one where you can watch where the brush strokes, what direction the brush strokes are going in. So I like this kitty. We're going to go next. In here, um, you can crop it down, get it close to its whiskers. If the picture that you brought in was slightly askew, you can fix that as well. We'll go next. Here we have a picture height. If you knew um, what size you really needed it to be, you can type that in there. So there is um, a, a personal project that I was working on and we'll do that. And the reason why you wanna do that is because again, there's two ways that you can use an image. You can use an image as just a template and, and do your sketching on top of it, or you can bring in an image, add some, uh, add some thread painting to it and print off the image. And then you have an embroidery to go on top of that printed image. I will talk, talk about that in a little bit. You can also choose your very beginning color from here. So if you choose the um, eyedropper and you go somewhere in there, it's going to bring up your color, color palette. And I am set at the Robeson Anton. That is my default. So it's bringing up threads that are the closest to that thread where I placed that eyedropper. And the gray is fine. So we'll go ahead and we'll go with gray. And we'll go next. So you have some options for alignment stitches. These are meant for if you are going to use this um, finished embroidery to go on top of a piece of fabric that you have printed or a, a, maybe even a, a quilt panel that you have, something like that. You do want to choose some alignment marks because they will help you um, when you have your fabric hooped and you're trying to line this um, embroidery image up with the background image. For what I'm going to show you first, I'm not going to choose any because we're going to treat this just as a sketch image and I'm going to click finish. So you can see here that I have both the sketch window open and behind it is my um, my Sonet basic, I shouldn't say basic, um, the base of my Sonet live, uh, my Sonet software. That is because everything that I do in Sketch is automatically going to appear into um, the base of the software. So they're very much integrated. Okay, I'm going to make this window bigger so that I can see and so that you can see. So right now, this is just an image. And we're going to draw on top of that, if you will, with some Sketch stitches. And you have some choices. Up here in the upper right, we have our background. And next to that, you should see a little, a little carrot. Anytime you see that little carrot, that means there's more options next to that tool. So if you click on that, 
this first one means the background is, is on. It's full power how you brought it in. Then you also have where you can fade your background. And if you fade the background, it just does just that. It fades it so that you can put your stitches on top of it so it won't interfere. So you can see where your stitches are going. So if I did choose that gray thread and I had my background at full blown um, the way I brought it in, I may not be able to visually see that gray thread. However, if you need to have the image at full blown, you can always change your thread color just for while you're working. And that is super easy to do. You just come here and you change color. And let's go with, I'm gonna pick a brighter color so that it is contrast. And you guys know, if you know me, I'm gonna go for that pink. So you can always change that. And then later on, you can just change that color. Just because you're you're sketching it out in, in pink or blue or whatever color doesn't mean that's the color you have to stitch it out in. Your embroidery machine has no idea what well it knows, but it doesn't know what thread color you physically put on the machine. So that's completely up to you. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll do pink for now. And let me talk to you about these tabs right here. We have our standard tab. And our standard tab, I like to think of that tab as my stitch regulator, because like I said, this is a program that you think of um, thread painting. And that's exactly what we're pretty much going to be doing. So the standard tab allows you to choose your stitches. We can do a straight line, uh, a triple, or we can even do a motif. We can freehand draw it, or we can do it as a straight line. Down here, you have the options of your satin stitches. So we have a two, a four, a six, and that last one is a custom satin stitch. So if the two, four, six doesn't work for you, you can always go in to choose that one, go into the options, and you can change the, the width and the density. The width is how far, um, is how wide it's going to zig and zag, and the density is how close those stitches are going to stitch next to you, um, stitch on top of each other. You also have a starting point, you can change those, and you have this um, end point, so you can change those. You also have angles that you can play with. Don't worry, you still have options though when you get into the other. Uh, when you're up, oops, let me choose one. So for my straight, for this running stitch, it's just a straight stitch. You do have options for that. I can change my length if I need to. And a lot of times I do change my length. I'm, I very rarely use the 2.0. Most of the time when I'm doing this, um, I do drop it down to 1.5 millimeters. That gives a smaller stitch. And I when I use the straight stitch, as you saw when I did on my tablet, I would go over lines just like you would if you were um, at your sewing machine with your hands down and um, doing free motion quilting. You're going to trace over lines and things like that. So I mostly change that to a 1.5, especially for smaller areas. If I am getting into a much smaller area, I may change that down to a 1.0, maybe a 1.2, something like that to make that stitch a little bit smaller. I'm going to say okay for that. We also have our triple stitch. So it's exactly what it sounds like. It's going to take a stitch forward, stitch back, stitch forward, and move on to the next one, stitch forward, stitch back, stitch forward. And it's, it's automatically going to do that. It's not going to go around three times. It's going to do that triple stitch that we're, we're accustomed to doing. Here we also have our motifs. Um, so if you click on our motifs and we click on our options, we have Universal and we have uh, Who's for a Viking and we have Foth. And you have a choice of all those. It doesn't matter if those aren't the machines you have. That's okay. If you have a Foth but not a Viking, you can still use the um, the Viking stitches in this. It, it doesn't matter because this is the software and the machine and the software are two separate animals. So if you were to choose, um, I'll just stick in the universal because there's a lot in the universal. So I'm just going to choose. Mm, that one looks good. Oh, how cute. It's a dog. So. Oh, even better, there's a cat. You can change its height, its width, 
Um, you have all of these other options. And if I were to say, okay, we're gonna go with the cat and you can see that now my, um, my cursor has become a paintbrush. And if I just do a line and there you go, that's what it'll give you. So this is where you, where you need to go in and play because to me, I kind of have an understanding about millimeters. I am definitely more of an imperial kind of gal. Um, but if you do a little sample here, then you can see what it is and then you can make your adjustments that way. All I did here was I hit my control Z to delete that. But what I want to do is I want to go into, we're going to use a straight stitch. And please bear with me. I am using my mouse, so it may not come out as nice as I want it to. Um, but we're going to do some sketching here. And the one thing I tell everyone in any of my software classes, Zoom is your friend. Make it your best friend. In any program that you're working in, it is... It, it's huge to me. Um, I can't imagine not using the Zoom feature. So I'm going to use the Zoom feature where I click on it and we're gonna start with the cat's eye here. And do you see, I'm getting in nice and close to it. And I am going to change the background. I'm gonna fade it. And I can still see this one. This one's working out um, perfectly. You can um, lay your stitches in 3D mode or you can lay it in 2D mode. So if I were to click on the 3D, it takes it into 2D. And um, let's pick up my stitch. It's in pink. So I am just going to start drawing. And you can see right now I am in 2D mode. And 2D mode allows you to see your stitch points. It's not, it's not perfect, but not bad for using a mouse, right? And when you're in 2D mode, you do have the option that you can go in and move those stitch points. So right now, I am doing this continuously. I have not lifted my mouse yet, and I have not released my left mouse button. So the second I release my mouse button, there is going to be a tie off. So the um, tie offs and the trims are automatic. So every time you lift your left mouse, there's going to be a tie off. You can go into your preferences. I am just like in a Zen moment and I could just keep doing this. Um, so I lifted, I stopped. So right where I stopped, there is going to be a trim command. And if I right click, it drops that tool. So right up here, if you can look, there's a C here. That was the color change. And down here at this X, that tells me where my last stitch was. So that is where the, um, the tie off in the trim is going to be. That is something you want to keep in mind because every time you lift that pen, or you stop using it, there's going to be a tie off there. And I know with my machine, every time it does a tie off, it also does this little dance. So something you need to keep um, keep in mind. Now it's not going to have a bunch of jump stitch. It does take you. It does have a trim command in there. So if you have a machine that allows you to trim it, you're not going to have all of those jump stitches. But and I'm going to stop sharing for one moment so that I can look at your lovely faces and um, talk to you for a moment. So it, it will have trim commands, but this is when you wanna get, you really wanna take a look at your image and kind of have uh, a map, if you will, of what directions you're going to wanna go. Just like when you're sitting in front of your sewing machine doing free motion, you in your mind have a little idea of what sections you wanna do. You're not going to do the cat's eye and then jump over and do the other cat's eye and then maybe come up here and do an ear. You want to look at it that, okay, how can I, how can I do this that is going to have less starts and stops for me? If you start out for the first one that you do, you have a lot of starts and stops, that is okay. The other thing I want to show you, and I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. 
The other thing I want to show you that is very beneficial to having these, um, uh, these sample files is, I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm not going to save the changes. We're okay there. And I'm going to cancel this. And I am going to insert. The cat is already done for you. These, now I'm in the stitch file. So this cat is already done for you and you can see it there. But the benefit of having that cat done for you, and it's super nice um, because you can touch the um, player, the design player. Oh, my kitty's too big. I'll move him over. Let me center him in the hoop. I'll just change the hoop size. It'd be faster. So if you go to your um, design player, I'll take it to the end and press play. I am going to move this fast forward a little bit so it'll stitch out. And you can do it at your own speed. But watching these um, already done sketches will, will help you develop a, a plan of attack, if you will. It will allow you to see how they did it so that you have an understanding of what order they did it in. Again, another benefit to having these um, sample folders or this, these sample designs and things is that you can go and start playing and play, get used to the tools and the features before you um, jump into a, a major project. Okay. So since my cat is still here, I am going to go and talk about quickly the free motion. Um, the free tab is just that it is free motion, meaning that you are the, the stitch regulator, just like free motion on your sewing machine. How fast your hand goes, it all depends on on, on the stitches. So I'm just going to choose the single stitch. We'll do that. It'll just do a single stitch. The free motion stitch is um, what you would think of on the standard tab as your um, uh, pencil. And you also have the horizontal zigzag and the rotational zigzag. The horizontal zigzag, and I should do, let me do a little sample of what that looks like. So I'm going to put me back into... Okay, oh, let's choose a different color. You can't see that one. I'll go blue so we can see it. And I will read you that motion I did. And I went really fast. So right now I'm moving quite slow. So the faster you move, the larger the stitches. This was something that was difficult for me to get used to. Also, you have the rotational zigzag. And what this does, it changes the way the stitches go. If you notice up here with the first one that I did with the horizontal zigzag, and let me zoom in on those so you can see them. I don't have my bar here at the bottom. Why not? Oh, because it's out of the hoop. Let's redo that in the hoop. Went a little bit faster there. And now let me pull this one up. Okay, I'll zoom in on those. So if you look at these, this one was the horizontal. Even though I made a curve, these stitches are still staying horizontal. When I made the curve here, the stitches went with the curve. So that is the difference between those two. 
and there may be a time that you really want those stitches to curve with something. And that's why they give you those two options. You also have a speed here, so you can speed it up. Um, and again, it still has something to do with how you, how fast you move. I'm moving fairly slowly. And if I moved quick, that's, so this is something that you need to get used to um, and just play with the different speeds, find what works for you. Just like when you were trying out free motion on your sewing machine, your, your eyes, your hands, your feet, all of those had to work in conjunction with each other. For doing this free motion, your feet aren't involved. I, they can be if you want them to be, but they don't have to be. You also have calligraphy. And this angle, you can change the angle. You can change your zigzag. You can change the zigzag width for all of these up here as well. Calligraphy, I have not gotten a hand, hang of it. And I am doing this with a mouse. So let's see how well I can make a W. But if you hold down, not very well. If you hold down your um, Z key, your control Z, you can change um, the curve of um, the angle of that. Okay, any questions on that? Um, so let me look over here, I have some questions. If you have platinum, do you, I'm gonna stop sharing. If you have platinum, do you automatically get the embroideries on Friday? Um, yes. Um, even if you didn't have platinum, um, new embroidery designs drop every single Friday. So um, if you have um, the platinum and you have the subscription, you have access to them. If you do not have the subscription and you have the box version, they're still there. They are still dropped on Friday, um, but then they would be a purchase option. So that is there. Um, one more question. Using draw with straight stitch, are there uh, nodes applied? Choice of pairs. Okay, uh, so they're not nodes. They're actually um, they're actually um, your stitch points. I know what you mean by nodes. Nodes come from the graphic design software that's out there, and all of those little points, those are referred to as nodes. Um, but here in Sketch, they're just stitch points. So let me um, share again. And we can get close to those stitch points. I'm going to drop that tool and let's. So if I click on 2D, you can see here, and I will zoom in a little bit more. So all of those little black points that you see at the end of that stitch, those are your stitch points, your, your nodes. And yes, you can click on those and you can you can move them so there is some uh, adjusting that you can make within the software but again it doesn't have the same editing features that a digitizing program would have okay so i'm going to zoom back out and oops for some reason it stopped sharing Okay. All right. So I am going to go. So that is using an image um, to create a sketch. Now I am going to let's go file new. Let's start a new one. And I'm still going to load an embroidery and say next. And I'll just leave that as next. We'll load a picture. And this little girl has been in the software for since day one, it has been um, in the software. So we always refer to her and we'll say, okay. And we're gonna go next and next, it's fine. So if I knew a very specific size that I wanted it to be, um, I can type that in there and make it a very specific size. I'm just gonna leave it at its default right now and say next. For this, I do want to have some kind of alignment stitches because we're going to print the background image out on fabric and we are going to lay the and put it, hoop it up and embroider the um, decorative stitches on top of it. 
So you can either place your own corners or your own crosses, or you can automatically do the corners. I'm just going to automatically do the corners and there they are. And we'll click finish. So there is our image in the background and we can do some fun stuff um, on top of this. I am going to go back to standard because remember standard is a stitch rate regulator, if you will. And that's what I kind of want to do. And I'm going to choose this and I am just going to trace again. I'm using my mouse, so please don't judge me. So right now I'm doing, oops, doing a satin stitch. You get the idea. Good thing you have these designs. You could go back and, and do it yourself. Um, let's also do a motif. Let's bring up my options for motifs. I'm not going to do the cat. Let's see that one. I think that's the one they used on the sample. So then we can just draw them across. How fun is that? So what we're doing here is we are just adding a uh, dimension um, to this print to this printout. I'm going to go to my straight stitch and then and let's zoom in. Told you, zoom is your friend. And we can just start tracing around her. You see what I mean by we always go backwards? And you could come down here, up and around. It's always good to have some kind of plan. So have your picture um, maybe also next to you or in another source so that you're not just looking at this picture, you're also looking at another source because when you're zoomed in, you may lose um, track of where you're at. Some people are very visual and they need to see the whole thing. I kind of am a visual person, like with my calendars, I need a big calendar. So if I'm making plans, I have the whole month in front of me and you can say, yes, no, you know, can't do that. That's just who I am. So you get the idea of what is happening here. Oh, okay. So uh, we missed seeing the um, stitch points. So here they are. I'm going to right click to release that tool. And I guess um, we had a misfunction here and you couldn't see all those stitch points. But I am in 2D right now. So up here, you have that option of being in 3D or 2D. I know I'm in 2D right now because I can see these stitch points. And if I click on a stitch point, I can adjust it. So if it wasn't exactly where you want it to be, you can you can adjust it. I will tell you one little worded advice here. It does not need to be perfect. Do not feel that you have to go back and change every single one of these um, stitch points. This is a free flowing, more organic kind of program. And it, it's supposed to be mimic more like hand stitching or free motion than it does uh, uh, digitizing. So don't get hung up on trying to get all of those nodes exactly in there. If you want a Zen moment, like I had with the cat, I just kept going. It can be therapeutic to go in and move all of those stitch points. And that is fine too. Remember, at the end of the day, this is your project. This is what's going to sit well with you. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out. And so you get the idea of what we can do there. I'm running out of time, and I do this every time. I just have so much to say. I am going to go to File, New. And I'm not going to save these changes. I am going to do um, load in an embroidery because this little girl is also already stitched out for you in a couple different ways. And I'm going to bring that one in, say open and finish. And there she is. And let's go and fade our background so that you can see the stitching better. I'm going to 
get rid of the background altogether. And there's the stitch out. So I am going to stop sharing for a moment because I did um, print this out. This was printed on um, photo, uh, photo fabric. So this is pre-treated fabric. And if you can see, I don't want to get too close, but you can see that I also stitched it out. And I did have to line this up in my hoop to get it perfectly, perfectly aligned. Um, and when you do this, so you had that option in the wizard to choose a specific size. And you want to choose that specific size um, while you're in the wizard because when it when the wizard's finished and you click finish, it goes into the hoop. And you need to print this image from the sketch program because the image in your embroidery, like on the screen, you worked on top of it. So you want to make sure that you're printing this at the exact size that this is. And you can do that by going to File, and I go to Print Setup First. And in here, you have all kinds of options. You want to make sure that you turn off the print worksheet. Um, if you turn on the work print sheet uh, worksheet, then you'll get all of these this information if you choose to. And you'll also get um, the grid and things like that. But all you really want is just the image itself printing from the background. And that would be here. You also have the option where you can fade the picture if you want it to. Or if you're going to print it on an iron-on transfer, you have the option to um, flip it to do it in reverse so that when you do the iron-on transfer onto whatever you're transferring it onto, it's going to be upright and then you hoop it. So it is important to, to print your background image while you are still within Sketch. The other important thing that you want to make sure of is that you print it at 100% or true to size. If you don't, if that setting is not checked or it's not proper, then your embroidery is not going to line up. And you saw that mine perfectly, it lined up, it took a little bit of work. Um, and just like anything else that you're, you're um, doing in your uh, embroidery machine where you have to line it up, it takes a few moments. It's not just automatic. Um, there is things that you can do. Um, there are options on your machines that allow you to line things up. So let me um, stop sharing for a moment um, because what we do is we get a lot of questions about um, different printable fabrics in the two brands that I have chosen and they are not affiliated with um, my Sonets in any way. These are brands that I have tried and I have used. Um, the first one is Threads. Um, that is the brand name. This particular um, brand and company carries different sizes. So if you do have a larger format printer, you can um, print something out larger. So they do have these sheets pre-treated. Um, pre so then um, it'll take the inkjet um, ink really nicely. And it is inkjet. It is not for laser. These are inkjet. And then the other brand that I have found is um, the EQ Printables. These work out great as well. Again, pre-treated. These two brands I have found, and I have tried very many different brands of, of photo uh, paper, and these two are so far the best. They have the most vibrant colors, very vibrant. And they also have a backing to them so that it goes through your printer with ease. Um, you can, of course, treat your own fabrics if you like to. There is a product out there called Bubble Jet if it's still available. It's a pre-treater for your fabrics. And then you would um, cut your fabric to size, uh, let's just say eight and a half by 11 because that's standard. And you would also fuse that on to a piece of freezer paper and that freezer paper will allow you to take it through uh, your printer. Um, I have found that the colors are much more vibrant when I use one of these two brands um, opposed to treating my own fabric. And it may be what because of whatever treat treatment that they have on their, their sheets. So I just found that interesting. Um, let me show you here some inspiration as well. 
So here I actually stitched out that cat. I did it um, monochromatically and it came out really nice. This was not something that I needed the background for. I used the background image as my template to get this really nice free motion cat. Um, if I had, if I had printed the background to have behind it, because of all the stitching that is there, the background would have been a waste. Now for this project, I told you I was going to share a personal project with you and um, it was just a test project. This one is an ad, a digital ad that I purchased. So this is, um, this is copyrighted, but it, it's something that I purchased myself and I can use for personal um, reasons. And what I did here was I just did some, I used the freehand, the, the single stitch, and I just traced over this. And the reason why I did the one from the line from the standard was because, again, it's a stitch regulator. I didn't have to think about it. And to get all of those lines, it was easier for me to do it um, on my tablet than with a mouse. And if you notice here, my lines did not line up. I normally don't point out my mistakes, but today I am going to because it is a learning moment. Um, the machine that I have, um, I use, is, it's the FOF icon. And on that machine, it has um, projection. So I projected my image onto my background um, that I printed out. And I focused, if you look, this came out really nice. It lined up. But I didn't take the projection to other portions. Me and my infinite wisdom, I thought, oh, that section is lined up. So it would be lined up elsewhere. No, that's not the case because we are human and I am the one who put that fabric in the hoop. So the machine doesn't know that that fabric might be slightly askew. So you do want to take some time and play with your um, your projection or your scanning or your precise positioning or whatever your your machine has check different sections of um, your printed out design and make sure that that um, design is lining up where it needs to be. As you can see, it is the proper size because I did print um, my background image directly from Sketch and made sure that it was at 100%. Another thing that you can do, and I bought this fabric and I thought, ooh, I can do Sketch on this. This is a a fabric panel. Surprise, it's cats. And if you get close to that, you can see some detail within that, that really lends itself to taking it through this program and being able to um, drop some stitches in there, some sketch stitches. And then you can also take it into the basic level of the software and you can bring in some super designs and you can lay um, physical flowers um, on top of like a flower that's here or something. So you have all kinds of options. And I will. I know I'm running out of time, but I'll quickly um, bring that up for you. So what I needed to do is I needed to take a photograph of my fabric. I did give it a nice little press with some starch um, because if it has waves in it, those waves will show up. Um, so let me go file new, let me present again. And we'll go file, new, no, I'm not going to save the changes. I want to bring up, and we'll do that. So the picture, this picture is in a different place. I threw it on my desktop um, and say, okay. So this is an image that I took. I took it with um, my, my phone. The, so I had a di digital image and sent it over to um, my my computer and I can crop it if I want to, but I don't want to because I want to keep it that size. And I'm going to go next. And where it says picture height, um, that is where you would type in the height. So I have, uh, I don't know why it stopped sharing. Sorry guys, let me go back. Okay, so I brought in my image. There it is, it was on my desktop. Let's go next and here. And this is where it says picture height. 
that is important because again, we are going to um, line our finished embroidery up with a finished fabric panel. So you would measure your fabric panel and you would enter in that size right here. And I know that this um, fabric panel, I believe it was 241 millimeters that I figured out it to be. And go next. I do wanna have some kind of markings for when I line it up and I click finish. And this was not the image that I had. Oh yeah, this came out very nice. So now I can start doing all of my, my doodling right on top of it and have a finished embroidery and then I can hoop my panel and then I can take it over to my embroidery machine and embroider that out. So that is just another option of what you can do with the sketch program. Okay, let's, I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, there's so much more that I can say um, about the sketch program. Uh, I would highly suggest just get those sample files play with the program. Once you start playing with it, you're going to think, oh, I can do this. I can do that. And there are so many things that you can do with it. I barely scratched the surface of what Sketch can do. So I hope that you will take some time and, and you know, play with that program. Not a lot of people do. And I hope that by the time I'm back out on the road, I have um, this fabric panel done, knock on wood. Um, don't know if it'll happen, but I hope I do have it done. So if there are no more questions, I do want to tell you um, that uh, the next MyStoNet Facebook Live is going to be Wednesday, February 8th with um, Mickey Hudson. And the topic is to be determined. It hasn't, surprise, it'll be a surprise for you guys. So not sure what it's going to be, but yay for Mickey. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you have a little bit of more understanding of what this program can do for you. And I can't wait to see you guys um, again next time. So everyone, you have a great weekend and enjoy.